those are your latest headlines. Welcome to France Van Kant, broadcasting from Paris. Well, it's New Year's Eve for many of you joining us, but there are some partygoers around the world who've already embarked on their 2012. Well, you may still be deciding on your New Year's resolutions, but they probably won't be as weighty as those of French President Nicolas Sarkozy. Tonight, he'll present his wishes for France for 2012. And with unemployment at its highest for more than a decade, as well as having the Eurozone debt crisis to contend with, he has plenty to wish for. In Russia, supporters of the ultra-left opposition are attending a rally in central Moscow against the leadership of Prime Minister Vladimir Putin. Syria's opposition groups have signed a deal that sets out how the country should function should President Bashar al-Assad go. The Syrian National Council and the National Coordination Body for Democratic Change in Syria both put pen to paper in Cairo on Friday. It maps out a political and democratic future for a transition period. But for protesters on the ground, the fight to depose Assad is as bloody as ever, despite the presence of Arab League monitors. Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan has declared a state of emergency in parts of four northern states. U.S. Republican presidential candidates are spending this New Year's Eve weekend crisscrossing Iowa ahead of next week's caucus. Well, it is, of course, the last day of 2011, and what a year for news it's been. There was a tsunami in Japan, drought in Africa, and a financial earthquake in the Eurozone. And, of course, we've had the Arab Spring, still raging in Syria, as we saw earlier in the bulletin. Let's take a look back now at the revolution that's dominated headlines around the world in 2011. Well, that's all we have time for this hour. There's more news and headlines on our website. That's it. We're back in 20 minutes. Thank <laughs> you.